In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. A very warm welcome to our service this morning on a rather grey November day. This Sunday is one that I like to call Random Sunday, because throughout November we've got All Saints, then we've got Remembrance, next week we will be celebrating Christ the King, and then we get this sort of random low Sunday in the midst of it all. And yet this Sunday is quite a pivotal one because it really does turn our heads towards looking towards Jesus, not only coming as King, but then we are stepping into that Advent journey the week after. So thank you for joining us this morning. We're going to join now together to sing to God be the glory.
So with you. So let us pray. Almighty God, to, to whom all hearts are open, open all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. As we look towards the return of Jesus as King, we remember that when he returns, we will give before him an account of our lives. We will do so in the presence of a loving God. But even so, there will be things that we will need to have said sorry for. And so as we come to our confession, it's a time now to bring before our loving God those things that we're sorry for. Let us confess our sin in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, Almighty, Almighty God, God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father we, we have, have sinned, sinned against, against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To, to the, the glory, glory of your, your name. name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together now to sing the Gloria. Thank you. 
So let us pray. Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us from apathy, restrain us from excess, and revive in us new hope that all creation will one day be healed. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we have our first reading. This morning's reading is taken from Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid to waste. Though they build their houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink the wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, and, and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people. They shall walk like the blind, because they have sinned against the Lord. Because they have sinned against the Lord, their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh hung like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them. On the day of the Lord's wrath, in the depth fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed for a full and terrible end. He will make of all the inhabitants of earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to his disciples about the kingdom of heaven and told them, It is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the ta two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trusty slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who had been given two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents and see, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trusty slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? 
then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Lord, as we look at your word together this morning, help us to understand the invitation that Jesus is making in the parables that he shared with his disciples. Amen. Amen. Well, I have to say that the readings we get in late November are not the ones we associate with gentle Jesus, meek and mild, who preached the love of God and forgiveness for all as he fed and healed the multitudes. As the church year draws to a close, we move towards waiting for Advent and the looking forward to celebrating Christmas. However, the readings over the next couple of weeks shake us up before Advent by showing us a Jesus who doesn't mince his words. And today's parable is the third of four, which Jesus tells in quick succession, all of which are focused upon being ready for his return as king. And next Sunday, the church will celebrate Christ the King. But much as I would like to shy away from the next two weeks readings because they are uncomfortable, more than that, I'd like to explore what Jesus is inviting me to as a disciple. When he speaks so bluntly, when he makes me feel so uncomfortable. When we look at the context of these parables, Jesus is on his way to the cross and is not wasting a moment of time in explaining to his disciples that following him involves not only watching for the kingdom of God, but actively working with God to establish his kingdom on earth. A kingdom of peace, justice and love. A kingdom which Jesus has been inviting people to enter. A kingdom which he has been generously sharing with others and asked them to share with others with as much generosity as he has. And it's a kingdom which is dynamic, inclusive, a kingdom whereby the lowly are raised up and the proud are brought low. It's a kingdom whereby its citizens are invited to an adventure, to take risks, to stretch and grow beyond their comfort zone. And importantly, it is a kingdom which has been given to us. Like the slaves in the parable of the talents, we have been handed the immeasurable riches of this kingdom. And the big question is, what are we going to do with them? Well, I think the first line of this parable shows us something really key when we consider that question. Jesus begins like this, for it is if a man going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. Entrusted his property. What these slaves have been given belongs to the man. They have only been entrusted with it. Similarly, what the disciples of Jesus who heard this parable had been given was the riches of the kingdom of God. And as Jesus prepared to die, rise again and return to his Father in heaven, he began by clarifying to his disciples exactly who these riches belonged to and that they were entrusted to them. Likewise, when we've been, what we have been given does not belong to us. Everything is pure gift. This world, each breath we take, each opportunity that comes our way, each mouthful we eat, each pound in our pocket, each, re each relationship we have, our faith, everything is all pure gift from the one who created us. 
These are all riches of God's kingdom and the means by which we can either choose to expand his kingdom or dig a hole and bury it because we are frightened of losing what wasn't ours in the first place. And if we begin from this starting point of all being gift, we will begin from a place of humility, a place of gratitude, a place of open handedness, open heartedness towards God and neighbour. And we will avoid the temptation to grab for and fight over what does not belong to us. The second point Jesus makes is that the slaves are all given different amounts. And that's because this isn't a parable about how much we have been given. It is a parable about what we do with what we have been given, be it large or small. It's no secret that the church, like many others in the world right now, is challenged financially. And yet I never cease to be amazed at how often it is those with so little who proportionally give so much. Similarly, I never cease to be amazed at how often it is those with the least time or energy who give so much time or energy, sharing their gifts and expertise to enable the ministry and mission of God's kingdom in this place. And equally, I am humbled by those who say to me, I can't do what I would like to, but I can and do pray for God's church, our young families, our community, our local schools and hospitals. So firstly, Jesus invites us to recognise that all is gift. And secondly, not to compare ourselves with others, but rather to consider how God may be inviting us to use what we have to grow his kingdom here on earth. As we have seen, it is a kingdom of justice, peace and love, a kingdom of forgiveness and new beginnings, a kingdom open to all, a kingdom whereby the king himself takes risks, coming in the form of a human person. Jesus risked rejection and criticism everywhere he went, but never once did he bury the riches of God's kingdom out of fear. In fact, at his most fearful, in the Garden of Gethsemane, the night before he died, where he sweated blood, he was so terrified, and needed the presence of an angel to strengthen him, he still didn't run away frightened and bury his talent so that forgiveness and new life might be available to all, both saint and sinner alike. If you have read C.S. Lewis's Narnia Chronicles, you will know that in the first book, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, in chapter 8, there is a passage where the children are talking to Mr. Beaver. And you get this wonderful dialogue about Jesus, who is portrayed as a lion called Aslan. Mr. Beaver says, Aslan is a lion, the lion, the great lion. Ooh, said Susan. I thought he was a man. Is he quite safe? I shall feel rather nervous about meeting a lion. Safe, said Mr Beaver. Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe, but he's good. He's the king, I tell you. Jesus didn't live a safe life. He lived an abundant life. And in John 10.10, 10, he says this, I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. To follow Jesus is to live an abundant life. He is good, but he isn't safe. And he doesn't invite us to be safe either, but rather to risk rejection as we stand up against injustice, call out hatred and exclusion, and actively seek peace, inclusion, and reconciliation in God's world. Risk discomfort as we make better choices about the way we live, shop and use the resources of the creation that God has entrusted to us. Risk heartbreak as we walk with those who are lost, lonely, suffering and dying, 
so that God's unconditional love, mercy and hope fills their lives. Finally, in this parable, Jesus says to his disciples, to those who have, more will be given. To those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. It's an uncomfortable end to this parable, but at the end of the day, if we have been given all the riches of the kingdom, and instead of risking them to bring abundant life to others, we bury them, of course they will be taken away and put in the hands of those who will make good use of them. Having risked everything, Jesus died and was buried. But God raised him from the dead, brought him home and poured out his Holy Spirit on all people because God is not in the business of burying, but instead releasing and raising up. And the most wonderful part about this parable is that God invites us to join with him in releasing those who are held captive by fear, poverty or anything else. To join with him in raising up those who have been brought low by the greed and injustice of this world. And to join with him in pouring out the gifts of his Holy Spirit and the riches of his kingdom on all people. God has generously entrusted us with all the riches of his kingdom. And the big question Jesus is asking us is, what will we do with them? Amen. <clears throat> so please join with me to declare our faith in our generous God. We say together, we, we believe, believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and, and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. So let us pray. Hey, King of Heaven, in this most sombre week of remembrance, we thank you that you live in a place of perfection, light, joy, and peace, where violence is no more. We ask that those who have fallen in war, combatants and non-combatants alike, may find their place in your heaven and a very different order of being in your peace. We give you thanks this week for all the encouraging signs of a vaccine. We thank you also that so many people in America have shown that they are not willing to participate in violence, intolerance, bigotry and irrational hatred. We pray that what they have begun at the election they may carry through without bloodshed. We thank you for the work of charities abroad and here as they seek to relieve poverty. And we give you thanks in particular for our own BBC Children in Need being broadcast tonight. May their efforts be blessed as they help young people in all imaginable kinds of need those that have been bereaved early in life, those with disabilities, mental and physical, those who are young carers, people who have not had the chance to see the countryside, to participate in music 
or to lead the sort of lives that most of us take for granted. We thank you too for all that make use of this money and organise activities, counselling and support. Thank you too for the work of our own One Can Trust and the Wickham Homeless Connection in this town. That their efforts too may be richly blessed as the winter sets in and hardships are doubled. Thank you for the loveliness of this county at this time of year with its brilliant colours, its changing skies, its cloud formations, the wind, the sun, and all that speaks of the glory of your creation. We ask that the finding of a vaccine may bless not merely research and medical conditions, but the many branches of research connected with healing and maintaining our beautiful world, protecting it from the ravages of past and present industrial pollution. Bless, dear Lord, those who are ill with COVID, and with other types of illness. Those like Elizabeth Lanson, who continue to suffer the restrictions of living in a care home. May their ordeal be brought to an end with some common sense measures to protect all and to allow those who can best minister to their parents, their grandparents and their friends to have access once more. We pray for a world where there will be loving contact. Dear Lord, bless those who have died in your faith and your peace. We lift to you, Rudy Sauer, in confidence that he is already with you, reunited with his loved ones and healed of the illness that made his last few weeks so debilitating. We pray for his wife, Edna, for Chris and Tony, Claire, Becky, and all the great-grandchildren at this time of loss and adjustment. Be with them, supporting them. Lord, in your mercy, may these prayers be heard and all the prayers that we have made collectively. In your power, in the love of Christ and with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So as we come now to celebrate communion together, we do so in a spirit of peace. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So I invite you now to call to mind family and friends, both near and far, and say together, peace be with you. Peace be with you.
blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit, and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, we proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your son, our Lord. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come again. again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise, as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing and, and honour and, and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. As I receive the bread and wine on your behalf this morning, this is your time to take some time in the presence, the real presence of Jesus who is with you through his Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, in this holy sacrament, you give substance to our hope. Bring us at the last to that fullness of life for which we long, through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Do have a few notices this morning. Firstly, after this service, um, about 15 minutes after the service, there will be Zoom coffee. If you'd like to join us, please contact Sarah Pritchard on the Friends of St Francis Facebook group and uh, she will give you the details that you need. Um, also to say that Mary Phipps has very kindly um, done us a calendar again this year. Um, ready for next year so those are available now from Mary her telephone number is on the website and um, all proceeds from those go to the church organ restoration fund um, next week I'm hoping early next week you will all receive a pastoral letter and I know folks are a little bit sort of anxious about what Christmas may or may not look like um, just to reassure you, there are various plans in place, depending upon what we are able to do. And the Worship and Mission Group meet again tomorrow to try and finalise um, plans for Christmas. And I will put all those details as far as we can possibly know with the changing situation, but the options that will be available for us all to be able to still worship over Christmas. Christmas will happen. It's not that Christmas won't happen, but it may be different to what we've been used to, of course. So we're going to join together now with our closing hymn, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart.
worship this morning. I noticed as we've been worshipping, the grey clouds have started to disperse and the sun is coming out. We live in this time of ever-changing seasons, but the one constant we have is the God who created us and the God who loves us and the God who now pours out his blessing upon us. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds and knowledge in the love of God and his Son Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord in, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.